In this game, you play as Dave, from the title, who gets roped into hunting down fish for his buddy's sushi restaurant. By day, you shoot a bunch of fish, and by night, you serve up the catch of the day in the restaurant. The more you play, the more it opens up, revealing a huge and creative play space. It's a unique blend of adventure, 2D action, management, restaurant sim. Throw in some crafting, multiple plot lines, and some fantasy too, just for good measure. It's quite unlike anything I've ever played. Some of the first fish you hunt down for the restaurant are tiny tropical fish, which is a weird intro to the game. It's like walking into your local aquarium and going, mmm, yum. Within the first five minutes, I'd successfully nailed my first blue tang surgeon fish. So essentially, this is Spearing Dory. Dave the Diver is a mix of the real and fantastic, and you never have to worry about taking anything too seriously, because everything takes a back seat to having fun. It's chock full with fascinating actual facts about real marine animals, and then you boss fight a wolf field the size of a school bus. Dave the Diver is an absolute delight to look at. Above water, there's a visually pleasant kind of refined pixel art, whose brightness and hues immediately evoke a dreamy Caribbean vacation. Below the water is no less splendid, with great lighting and an uncommon eye-catching look. And there's so much glorious detail, like how the soft corals instinctively withdraw into their rock shelters when you get close. The vibe is really well done too, with stylized cutscenes that are full of charm and fun. The scuba part of the game involves exploring a dive site that changes every time you visit it, giving you good exploration opportunities. Your time underwater is, of course, limited by the amount of air in your tank, but you can extend your bottom time by finding various ways of topping up your air while you're underwater. While down there, you'll want to kill a variety of fish to keep the restaurant well stocked, and try to complete any fetch, delivery, or collection quests the various NPCs throw your way. You'll also need to avoid various aggressive fish that, if they manage to get a bite out of you, will deplete your air. Difficulty scales really well and very naturally. Small fish are easily killed with your starting gear, but the deeper you go, the bigger and more dangerous the fish get, and you'll need to scavenge materials to build bigger and better weapons. Money will also be important for upgrading your scuba gear, allowing you to go deeper for longer and carry more goodies back to the surface. The fun comes in trying to balance your air consumption with your ambitions for exploring deeper, and managing how much fish you can bring back safely to the boat. If you die, it's not game over, but you'll lose everything you've picked up except for one thing of your choosing, which feels like the right balance of harsh and fair. There are spectacular boss fights, with a diverse cast of nonsensically large sea creatures. These play out well in the old school fashion, with you having to learn attack and defense patterns that change as you wear down their health. These fights were just the right blend of challenging and forgiving. The restaurant half of the game is a surprisingly deep management sim, with some light action as you set up the restaurant and then attempt to keep all the customers happy before their patience runs out. Before the joint opens, you have to plan the menu which is based entirely off the fish you've caught. There are all kinds of upgrades available from improving the dishes themselves, to researching new exotic plates, improving the decor, or even hiring new kitchen and waitstaff. It's just the right amount of depth that pairs really well with the other half of the game, and in total makes for a superb well-rounded experience that never has a chance to get boring or monotonous. But when did I really know this game was good? When I discovered the core gameplay mechanic was a beautifully tuned beast. One of my rules of good game design is, pay extra attention to the things the player is going to be doing all the time. Make it feel great. Spearing is this thing, and it feels awesome. There are so many nuances to the interaction, from the animation, to the time dilation and juicy sound effects, to the visceral feel when the spear gun fires. I could spend hours breaking it down for you, but the most important thing is it just feels right. I can't imagine how many hours were sunk into fine-tuning this, but wow, it was worth it. As an early access game, there's an astonishing amount of content and features, all of it thoughtfully implemented and well QA'd, not just thrown in there to pad out the game with bugs to iron out at a later date. Your mileage may vary, of course, but I had a trouble-free early access experience. I was most impressed by the breadth of the story. There are all kinds of quirky characters with diverse interests, colourful backstories, and funny dialogue, who show up regularly to give you quests, and act as shops for improving your gear. Then there's a whole unexpected underwater mystery involving merpeople and giant squids. This game is like a giant onion that just keeps going as you peel back the layers. There's changing weather, and the way the raindrops look from below the surface as they penetrate the ocean was just perfect. You have a cell phone with a working calculator, because why not add that important feature to an early access game? There's a fully functioning Instagram clone social network where you can like posts. This game is shockingly crowned with things, and just when you think you've seen all it has to offer, it throws something new and surprising your way. The fact is, Dave the Diver is bloody fantastic. It's charming and approachable, 
There's a crazy amount of polish, attention to detail, and stuff to do for an early access game. You should really just ignore the early access tag, in fact. I've played fully released AAA titles that weren't this well crafted, stable, or feature complete. I ploughed through the main storyline, which comprises three chapters in about 16 hours, but there are still a bunch of side quests to complete. The restaurant needs to be optimised, and I've just unlocked two new gameplay areas. There's plenty left to do, and probably even more things to discover still. I can't wait to get back to it, and I'm also very much looking forward to the remaining main story chapters being released at launch. There are definitely some quality of life tweaks that can be made between now and then that will really help elevate this game even further. I like Dave the Diver so much that it's a contender for my game of the year. If you can look past the weirdness of making Nemo Nigiri, and the message that the ocean is basically an all-you-can-eat buffet, then don't hesitate. Pick it up right now and enjoy it before everyone else discovers how good it is.